Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Frostbite's Gaming Experience Pokemon Blue Walkthrough. Talking to Bill. Got mixed up in a bit of an experiment. Now he's like a Pokemon. And now we gotta kind of change him back. Yeah. On that note, one of the funnier things that I have seen as far as like videos on YouTube goes um, on Dorkly, they have the whole entire, like, Pokemon series, um, uh, one of them is the Rusty series, which is actually pretty funny, now they got, uh, what was it called right now, um, Randy? No, that's not right, what was the guy's name? Anyways, they got, like, a new Pokemon series going on, and then they have one where Bill and another Pokemon get stuck into it, and when they transfer over, they fuse together, and it's really disturbing, but at the same time, it's actually really funny. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm sick inside and stuff like that's a little bit humorous to me. Not exactly sure. But yeah, I think it's called Poke... One of them's Pokemon Rusty. Uh, and if it's the one that I'm thinking of, it's definitely one of my favorite video series right next to Sonic for Hire. But anyways, so... What exactly... Is it that I was alluding to yesterday that we are looking to do today? Well, first off, we got to mosey ourselves on over back to route number 24 and catch ourselves in Abra. Okay, now, if, as you can tell in the title, you know, we are catching uh, the legendary Pokemon Mew. We are using a glitch in this game in order to get ourselves a Mew way, you know, like the one of the, earlier than one of the other ways. Later. It really did feel like six and a half hours to catch this Abra because the thing with Abra is that, you know, Abras are really fast. So having a Pokemon with a higher speed than an Abra is relatively tough and an Abra will just teleport away. And you heard on the stats of the last video, I think it's like, what, a 15, 10% chance of running into one, maybe even just a 5% chance, something like that. Uh, because of how low of a chance it is to run into him, it becomes a bit of a pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit start right before viewing this trainer. We're going to use Abra to teleport to the last Pokemon Center we are at. This will cause him to notice us, but we are going to leave before he can do anything about it. Now during this time, our start button does not work, and you do not want to go into any houses because then it kind of just screws up the whole entire coding of the game. There is one, well, there's two trainers. One of them's a gambler, I think, on, I can't remember what the route name is, but people that know about the glitch mostly know it through there, and I mostly knew it through this one, okay? There, there's a gambler, I can't remember where, but there is a youngster, I believe it is, that has a slow poke that has a certain stats on it that make it so that it will actually reset the game data. Now, one thing that is crucial to know here, the kid has to walk up to you to fight you, all right? If you talk to him or you only walk right in front of him, it'll cause the game to just freeze and crash right then and there. He has to actually walk up to fight you. Now, again, I don't know what it is about this slow poke or the Pokemon. It might be another slow poke. Um, but there's something in the coding of the Pokemon that allow the game to kind of like reset itself in, 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 in an awkward way. It's like, I don't know, like I only know so much when it comes to coding and because of that, you know, I don't know exactly what all the numbers uh, written inside the code of this game that cause a glitch like this to happen. But for whatever reason, you know, when you do teleport away, in order to unlock all the controls, you know, the only way to do it is by going against the slow poke where the kid has to walk up to you. And again, the other one is a gambler on route, whatever the hell the route name is, I don't know. And again, if you want it that much later, then go right ahead. But if you want it this early, this, you know, this is the way to do it. Um, one of the other things to know, well, actually, I'll go more into that a little bit later, because what you're going to do is you're going to teleport back. And once again, I do not believe, that, I think at this point, yeah, once you'd use the teleport again, your start button once again will not work. And it will not work until you get up onto the Nugget Bridge when it does this pallet swap. The minute it does, one of the guys that's supposed to be up there will randomly appear, your start button will randomly appear, and by hitting B to exit out, you have your fight against a wild Mew, level 7, only knows pound. You know, there you go. An easy way to get yourself a Mew on your team if you really want to. Um, I unfortunately don't care enough. I'm not gonna have Mew on my team. 
Um, and I remember trying a couple of Pokeballs because when it came to Legendaries in Generation 1, if the Pokemon... If you missed the Pokeball towards the Pokemon, then that was it. But the minute the Pokeball would actually catch the Legendary Pokemon and start, you know, rolling around, it was a guarantee 100% that you got the legendary Pokemon, which I kind of prefer, just because then it doesn't really tug on my heartstrings nearly as much. The numerous amount of times with later down the road games with legendary Pokemon, where it'll wiggle three times and still can't get it. And after going against the Mew, everything is totally fine. You don't have to worry about your game crashing or anything like that. And there you go, free Mew if you so totally want it. Um, another interesting thing to note, um, one of the old things that I thought was needed when I originally would do the Mew glitch on my original Game Boy when I first heard about the Mew glitch was I thought that you need to have a level 18 Wigglytuff. And it turns out, obviously, that you don't, but I think what it was was that it was believed that you needed a level 18 Wigglytuff just because a Wigglytuff at level 18, I believe, no matter what, has a faster speed than the Wild Abras, which would then allow you to cast Sing on them when you first ran into them. And if the saying hit, then you know, you have an easier chance of catching yourself in Abra. So I think that's where the random idea that a level 18 Wigglytuff was needed to catch an Abra, I mean, not an Abra, but a Mew, it wasn't required for the game's coding to catch the Mew. It was just kind of one of those, it's required if you want to catch an Abra without waiting what essentially feels like six and a half hours, okay? On that note, because I completely forgot what I was talking about beforehand, um, let's talk about Cerulean City as far as what you can catch there because there's water all over the place so there's obviously got to be something that you can catch while fishing. So of course that means I got to go through it. So Old Rod, take a guess. It's 100% Magikarp. Who would have thought? Got yourself a good Rod, 50% chance it's a polywag and 50% chance it is a goldine super rod red blue versions 33% psyduck crabby and goldine kind of like how it's always been and then back to the yellow 70% chance it's a goldine 70% chance it's a sea king it's basically the exact same thing fishing wise as route 24 but it guarantees that you are going to catch the same things even when you go beyond route 24 back to the cerulean city area if you surf enough now, one thing that's actually interesting is that I don't see any stats as far as, like, what kind of Pokemon you can catch while surfing in this area and, uh, like, Route 24 and 25. Don't exactly know why there's no statistics to that. Um, it, it's probably better uh, if you look on, like, Bulbapedia, uh, non-Bulbapedia, but one of the other uh, websites that has all the statistics and whatnot, and they'll probably have it. Um, this, is all, this is also where you can get yourself your Bulbasaur gift Pokemon, and then also in the red and blue versions, you can trade a Parley, Poliwhirl for a Jinx. There you go. Again, I'm not really going to be showing off any trading because I'm not looking to actually capture Pokemon. So we just got done beating a Team Rocket that gave us the TM that he stole in Dig, and we're just not going to give it back to the gentleman that he stole it from. But even if you do talk to the gentleman, he does state that he doesn't want to see it because it just reminds him of the fear of a Team Rocket member basically breaking into his house. I can't blame him. I've never been through that, but I'm pretty sure it is a scary thing to have a burglar go through. So we just walked through Route 5, which does have its own little bit of, you know, Pokemon you can run to in the grass, red and blue version. 35% chance you can get you, catch a Pidgey yellow version, 45% chance with a 5% chance it's a Pidgeotto. Yellow version, 25% chance it's a Rattata with a 10% chance it is a Jigglypuff. Red version, 40% chance you'll catch yourself an Oddish. Blue version, 25% chance it's a Meowth. Red version, 25% chance you'll catch a Mankey. Blue version, 40% chance it's a Bellsprout. And 15% chance it is an Abra in the yellow version. And then on Route 6, uh, it looks like exactly the same. Do, do, do. Other than just some higher levels, I believe. Looks like every single number is exactly the same. So, Route 5 and Route 6, exactly identical, minus the levels? No? No, it looks like even the levels are exactly the same, too. 17, 17, 14, 16, yep. So, everything's exactly the same between Routes uh, 6 and 5. The only difference is that on Route 6, there is some water that you can fish, and in this case, surfing, where it does show that in the yellow version only, 
95% chance that you can catch yourself a side oak with a 5% chance it's a gold duck. In the yellow version only, surfing. Don't know about red and blue. I guess somebody decided that the stats weren't good enough for their website. Who knew? Anyways, uh, fishing-wise, anything around the ordinary? Yes, there is. So, take a guess. Old rod, 100% chance of magic carp. whoop de doo Alrighty, uh, good rod. Same deal, poly wagon gold lean 50% down the middle for both of them. The only difference is that in a super rod this time, you have a 50% chance of catching a shelter, and the other 50% chance is catching a crabby, red and blue versions, and the yellow version. It is a gold dean 100% of the time. So yeah, once again, I don't exactly know why the whole entire, I'm not getting any big statistics as to surfing period, or why even on Route 6, surfing only gives me what you can catch in yellow and not red and blue. I don't know, you take that with the Bullopedia website, which is basically where I go to get all of my statistics on percentages because, you know, I don't want to buy like a 20 to $40 you know, strategy guide for it or something like that. I'm pretty sure they're not that expensive anymore. Oh, and uh, really quickly, while I'm looking at my uh, volume levels here, uh, I obviously, if you're listening to this, uh, did not have to redo part five because it turns out that the uh, audio from the game and the audio from my microphone meshed up actually pretty well. So don't have to worry about that. So might be a little bit louder than parts one through four because with par parts one through four, I was running the volume at 40%. Um, so it's definitely going to be a little bit louder, but I don't think it's distractingly loud. And if I know my memory, I'm never going to remember to lower it down to 40% from here on out anyways. You know, I mean, I obviously forgot when I did part five. So, you know, I'm going to forget further on down the road anyways. So might as well just keep it like this and call it good. Anyway, so yeah. If, if you want to mew early, that's, you know, the way to get it. Again, the other way is through a gambler, whatever route it is. It's uh, next to Lavender Town. One of the gamblers down there resets everything uh, in order for you to be able to go against the mew. I still think you do have to go through Nugget Bridge. I think the pallet swap at Nugget Bridge is what causes it. But again, I've never done the mew glitch through the gambler, so it might even be an entirely different way to do it than the way that I just demonstrated. But again, if you want it really early, then there you go. That's as early as you can get it. Now, one thing that's actually really funny that I do want to bring up because I will completely forget at this point. So you guys notice the trainer, because um, again, there's two trainers that you have to keep up. Um, the, the one trainer in the patch of grass, you don't have to keep him up. It's just after you catch the Abra, he's the one that's like right there that you can utilize the whole entire teleport glitch with and then you go against the youngster as well. What I did forget, however, is that the trainer is still there. We don't actually go back and fight him. I completely forget about that trainer until the very end of the game. By which point... I already had, like, my Pokemon in the level 50s and 60s, I believe. Maybe not that high. Maybe they're just high 40s and, like, 50 or something like that. I don't fully remember. I have some of my teeth. Ah. Mm, good commentary. Anyways. So, yeah. All, all I could imagine was this poor soul has been waiting this whole entire time to go against me. And I pop up. And he's like, here's my big chance. And I teleport away. And the next time I see him, I've got like level 50 Pokemon and just completely curb stomp the poor guy. Like, I don't know. It's kind of funny to me. And yeah, chances are by the time we get to that point, everyone else is going to forget about it too. So it'll be just all good and fun uh, once I get up to it. I'm actually going to look up and hopefully this doesn't cause like any weird audio deals. But I do want to look up uh, the, the Pokemon series I was talking about, the Dorkly ones. Alright, where are you, Dorkly? Dorkly, Dorkly, Dorkly. Here we are, Dorkly, alright. Promoting another channel that's got 2.5 million. Alright, so the first one, yeah, it was Pokemon Rusty. If you haven't seen it, go out of your way. It is amazing. And it's Pokemon Ralphie. Is that what I said? No, what, what did I say? Maybe I did say Ralphie. Was I correct? I don't remember. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and just rewatch this part just to remind myself what I thought it was. So I w yeah, I was correct with the Pokemon Rusty. I think I said Rudy. I think it's, I said I thought it was Pokemon Rudy, but it's Pokemon Ralphie. Um, and yeah, the Pokemon Ralphie has Bill and the other Pokemon like combine 
into one creepy looking deal. It's rather, rather humorous indeed. But even if, you know, even if kind of like a little bit of like, like, I mean, it, it, it's, it's eight bit, really maybe kind of 16 bit. I don't know, whatever bit you want to call it, you know, kind of gorish humor kind of thing. It's not even really that gory, I guess. I guess it's because it's pixelated me. I don't know. Either way, you know, watch Pokemon Rusty and what they have uploaded so far, Pokemon Ralphie. I personally don't think Pokemon Ralphie, at least the beginning of it, is nearly as funny as Pokemon Rusty. Pokemon Rusty is just too funny, uh, especially when I look back and it's like, when I think about how I played Pokemon as a kid, it is almost exactly identical to what it's like when you watch when you're watching Pokemon Rusty, where it's like, you know, you're just like, why can't this Pokemon learn this, and why can't you evolve into this, and you know, all that good stuff. It's, it's a good time. It's really funny. So anyway, so um, people are probably wondering. Why exactly am I leaving Cerulean City when I haven't even gotten the gym badge yet? Well, it's because I want to grind for it. You know, that, that's as simple as that. I just want to get some grinding out of the way. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to it. Oh, uh, the other reason, yes, is because I go to my way to get my bike voucher while I'm here uh, in order to get my bicycle. Which is really funny that I do it this early because at the end of the day, I don't really utilize the bicycle a whole lot. But I'll go more into that once we get into the next part. I do hope you enjoyed the part. The rest of your evenings, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll catch you guys on the next part.